Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Here in California, we've been in lockdown for about two months. Um, and things are starting to ease up just a little bit. But one restriction that I assume will remain for quite some time is the requirement that you have to wear a mask when going into public places like stores and other buildings. Uh, that will probably remain long after the lockdowns are lifted. Um, and there are a lot of different kinds of masks out there. Most of them are not very flattering, kind of boring, kind of ugly. So I figured if I've got to wear a mask, I may as well wear a really cool one. And uh, what better way to get a cool one than to make one? So that's what we're going to do today. So I looked for some inspiration and I found a lot of different kinds of masks in comics, in cartoons, video games, movies. Uh, they're all over the place. There's a wide variety. And so uh, I'm just going to draw some inspiration from some of these and come up with my own design. So join me today as we design and begin assembling a mask. In this first part, we will uh, get through all the way till our first coat of primer paint. In the second episode, we'll do all of the paint, the weathering, and add the leather straps. The first step in designing a mask is to come up with a, a general shape. So I'm using a uh, cosplayer's trick of using tin foil to uh, wrap around the model, in this case me, to make sure that it fits and uh, I'm shaping it with this uh, aluminum foil so that it will keep its shape. Now I can take the aluminum foil and cut it into its individual pieces and flatten it out and I will have from that a pattern that will fit my face exactly. Then we'll transfer this pattern onto paper uh, and build a mock-up of the mask just to make sure that it fits. So you can see how it fits now. I've So the next step is to now cut this out along the lines and make another pattern. So here's my original rough pattern made with the tin foil. We then made that made it out of paper and refined it a bit. You can see some changes that I've made. The size of this, 
um, the shape here and the dart here have changed. We're going to transfer this now to some cardboard to make some patterns that will last longer. Uh, just in case I want to make more in the future, uh, it'll be nice to have some uh, durable patterns. So that's the next thing to do. What I have here is cardboard, kind of like the stuff that's on the back of like a notepad. But this stuff is actually fairly thick. It's almost an eighth of an inch thick. Um, so it's really thick. It's kind of hard to cut it even with scissors. So I'm actually going to transfer that and then I'm going to use the bandsaw to cut this out on this cardboard. Now I've only done one side. So this would be the uh, right side. All you have to do is turn it over and then you get the shapes for the left side. The stuff I'm going to make the mask out of is called styrene. It's plastic, um, and it's the same kind of plastic that uh, people will build like uh, models out of. You can see here it's about a sixteenth of an inch thick. Uh, you can buy this at hobby stores and at plastic stores. Um, this particular piece, it's white on this side, but the other side it's a poster, a movie poster for one of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Um, so I'm going to trace now my pattern onto this plastic. The nice thing about this plastic is you can just cut it with an X-Acto knife. You, you can glue it together with CA glue. So I'll go ahead and trace up my patterns and then I'll start working on cutting them. So this styrene cuts very easily with a exacto knife. I'll show you. You can kind of just cut, and if they're straight cuts, you do a cut and then you can just snap it and you get a nice clean cut. Um, I should be able to do a similar thing with the rounded cuts. I just have to be a lot more careful as I'm cutting them. Styrene is really one of the styrene is really one of the most fun things to work with because of how easy it is to to cut, and you'll see that it's almost as easy to glue. Now it's time to glue the pieces together. I've got a couple of different kinds of glue. Uh, I have this liquid cement for plastic models. Uh, this is good cement for styrene in general. I think I'm going to go with the CA glue to help. Now this is going to be kind of hard because these want to spring back to flat. A cool thing with styrene is if we just heat it up with a heat gun, then it becomes very pliable and we can hold it into shape. I'm going to hit this with a heat gun and we'll see if we can get a, a shape that's a little bit easier to connect together. Okay, you can see they've kept their shape from when I heated them up. This should make it a little easier to connect them together. Now let's see if we can glue this thing. And I'm going to have to do just a little bit at a time. OK, 
Okay, so I've decided I'm going to do a hybrid. I'm going to try a hybrid type of gluing. So first of all, I can use the super glue like you saw me do here. Uh, and I can hit it with the accelerator and it sets almost instantly, just within a couple of seconds, and it will hold it into place. And then along the inside, I'm using the liquid model cement um, and just running a bead right down the middle. This stuff does that melting the plastic from both sides welding thing even better than the super glue does. And so um, it takes longer to dry though. So I'll run a bead up in there and I'm just going to let that completely dry before I continue on because this seam will get a lot of stress in it even though it's already semi-bent with the heat gun it's uh, still going to have some stress trying to keep it together. And so uh, we're going to let that weld take place good and strong. Now that I've got a design, uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut out these pattern pieces and use them on these and start cutting them out. So these horizontal slits, uh, I'm actually not going to trace onto my flat pieces. I'm not going to put it on here. These are actually the breathing holes for the mask itself. So I've got my mask. Okay, now I'm going to start gluing pieces on as I cut them out. Uh, the first and what I feel is most important right now is to get the pieces that, that go across this seam. I, I keep breaking that seam, so I'm going to make this straddle across it. In order to make it do that, I've got to heat it up with the heat gun. So I'm going to have to touch up these holes. I was just taking a best guess anyway. But with the back sanded, 
I'm going to use a few dots of super glue to hold it in place, but I'm going to mainly have it bonded with the liquid cement. I have these half circles that are intended to go here on the front. Instead of having two half circles here that join in the front, I'd like to give this seam a little strength by using a full circle that I just fold in half over the front. Um, so I cut out a circle that says, I basically traced these right here, and I've got a line there where the center is. Now, I want to heat this up to bend it, but I only want to heat it up right there. So I'm going to try to shield the two sides and leave a gap open. So I've got some scrap wood here that uh, I'm going to line up and just cover everything except for that center seam. Very nice. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Now we're going to add some greeblies. Uh, if you've got a sharp eye, you probably would have seen that I already picked out a bunch of things over here. So I'll bring them up here for you to see. So greeblies are just little pieces of texture that add a little more interest to the surface. Um, and what I have done is I have a collection of model kits, plastic model kits, or old broken plastic models, and I have tons of little pieces, and I went through and kind of picked out a bunch of pieces that I thought might be useful. Now, on the original design that I drew, there is a lot of circles that, uh, you know, they're supposed to look like rivets or screws or bolts um, and I was initially going to just cut them out of flat styrene and glue them on maybe have layers of a little one on a big one but after looking through my collection of model pieces I figure there's a um, I've got these pieces that are like pieces of wheels things that have a little more interesting texture to them than what I would have put on them. So I think I'm going to use some of those things. I'm not going to use all of this stuff. I'm just going to use whatever kind of feels right. When you use pieces from old model kits, that's called kit bashing. It's putting together things from other kits. I'm going to break these little things off. And so it's totally fair to just cut them as I want just use the tiny pieces that I want. If I don't want this whole thing, I just break off the pieces that I do want. And I'll use my X-Acto knife and my sander. This is a modeling sander. The whole thing is coated in uh, an abrasive grit. So I can sand into small places like this. Parameters. So I'm going to start figuring out where I want to put some of these. and. Uh, start installing them. Now this piece is going to fit right over this angle. It's not going to be able to fit very flush, so it's going to float on both sides. Uh, I'm not super worried about that. I've got a plan for how to fill that in and make it more sturdy. So I just need to kind of hold it there long enough for it to Greedy 
Greeblies all attached. Now I know that it looks strange right now because all of the Greeblies are different colors, but you'll see one of the coolest things. When we paint this all one color, you'll see how cool everything is, how we just see the textures of stuff instead of the colors of them. So next I'm going to try to fill in all of these gaps and make them complete surfaces. Um, I'm going to fill that in by using white putty right here. Uh, I've only used this once before. Hopefully this will work out. Uh, we're about to find out. Putty's had plenty of time to dry, so now I need to sand it smooth. So I'm going to again use my little emery board. This is one of my favorite parts where I'm about to paint it all with a base coat of primer. Everything will become one color and we'll really get to see the textures of all the little greeblies without the distraction of the different colors that they have right now. So there you have it. This thing looks amazing. I'm so excited. Every time I do something like this and I paint it with a solid color, it just looks so cool. Sometimes I just don't want to go any further. But we are going to go further in the next episode. This is as much time as we've got today, so I hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure to hit subscribe and turn on the notifications so you don't miss part two when that comes out. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up. Hit the like button. I, I really appreciate that. And if you have ideas or thoughts, feel free to leave a comment. I appreciate those as well. So until the next video, don't be bored. Be creative. I'll catch you next time.